The fate of Utah. Currently, Utah is one of the most intriguing characters because in terms of what is his purpose left in the story, it's not very clear cut compared to a lot of our main cast. Let me give you an example. Yuji's purpose ties in nicely with Sukuna. So in terms of what his purpose is, we are still awaiting for Yuji to be executed. We have people such as Megami, who has his sister who he's trying to protect. And currently, potentially depending on how the outcome goes, it could impact him directly into the next path that Megami goes in his story. But with Utah, it's a little bit more different. His main purpose as a Jujutsu sorcerer is to protect his friends. This was heavily enforced all the way back into Volume 0, when you get that whole talk with him in Ghetto, and he talks about the fact that he doesn't know whether what he's doing is right or wrong. He can't even quantify if Ghetto's sense of justice is right or wrong as well. But his main goal is that because you are hurting my friends or trying to impact them in some way, he's going to do to fight back against them, showcase the level that Utah got to to be able to protect his friends by even doing a binding vow to get rid of his life to then impact and strengthen the love beam to finally defeat Ghetto. But now we're currently in the modern day age and Utah has surpassed and got so much stronger in terms of his reinforcement with him getting a domain, he's become a far more competent sorcerer in terms of his hand-to-hand -hand combat and he's in a situation where to get to that next level is very intriguing to me. Depending on who you talk to, he's potentially the second strongest current special grade and including people such as Kenjaku and Sukuna and in the strength department I don't believe there's anything to really downplay in Utah because he showcased why he's him in indications in the obviously Sendai colony. But in terms of what is next for Utah, it's because, like I said, his main purpose ties into nicely him wanting to protect his friends, as well as potentially before the start of the Sendai colony, where he says he wants to kill Kenjaku to avenge his sensei. But similarly, that still goes in nicely with his whole goal of protecting his friends. Gojo and his relationship is someone he treasures, so still following that same mentality is the goal that he has decided to go through, and I'm interested to see how far it could be pushed. We got some intriguing things in regard to people who doubted Utah in terms of Uru and Ryu who talked about the fact that they've seen the cap in terms of his strength and that for him to get to the next level he needs to get to that level of aggression and ruthlessness of somebody such as Sukuna in which we got that nice POV from Uru who is obviously from the Higher era. And I think this was an interesting thing to take because a lot of people would say that Yuta does not necessarily have that level of ego or individuality as some of the other characters such as Megami, Sukuna, Gojo and etc to get to that highest level. But everything in the story has currently disproved that with Yuta still being one of the strongest characters in the series with not necessarily having that strong sense of self. Now this is the two ways you can look at it. If you go to obviously Uru's comments. A lot of people use this as a basis for Yuta to die, but I'm going to go and delay that conversation a little bit and talk about specifically, does Yuta lack that ruthlessness? There's two ways to look at it. Yuta said at the end of the fight, he potentially would have killed Ryu and Uro if he didn't need the points. We also see that before he had accumulated another amount of points and he killed people such as Juve and other people previously that we obviously were off screened in which he managed to total an amount of points before even starting the whole Sendai colony. So him necessarily holding back and making sure that he doesn't kill these respective sorcerers maybe doesn't indicate that he does not have that sense of aggression but there is also other things that could indicate to us because some people like to say Utah is humble. I personally disagree because I believe there's a lot of things in terms of how he portrays himself especially when he's not around his friends which indicate to me that he's not humble however he's just more of a nice and timid guy in my personal opinion but that is not important to the overall conversation. The strong sense of individuality has been a key theme in terms of being the strongest in Jujutsu Kaisen but currently Yuta has been an anomaly to that theme. So how long can he actually play that role of being an anomaly to a person who might not necessarily have a strong sense of self? A good example is somebody such as Yuji. Yuji also has had exponential growth in parts of the series, but he's still currently lacking in this current juncture. But that strong sense of self is something that is going to prevent him from potentially getting to the next level, especially when he gets to a situation where he gets Sukuna's curse techniques, which will be imperative for him to become a top tier Jujutsu sorcerer. By spinning it back to Utah, the reason why a lot of people may doubt him actually getting to that level 
is because what would be the switch for him to abandon everybody? If a character's main goal is focusing on protecting everybody, there's a lot more things in terms of how you could see his conclusion go because him protecting his friends would still be a satisfying conclusion for him if he was unfortunately going to die. By taking away from the conversation of him going to die, will he ever get that honoured one moment and finally snap and take that new level to get to that part? This is me in my opinion to disagree with partially what Uro said because I do believe he has a level of ruthlessness in fights. However, it's not necessarily to the level that people such as Gojo and Sukuna are and for him to become potentially the next Satoru Gojo. And I think that is an interesting plotline in regard to Utah. There is so much that we could see from him in terms of his change of psyche and his new mentality that could potentially shape up for him to become a monster. The person who has been deemed as a prodigy and arguably be the best prodigy in the series. But that alone isn't enough to then take him to the top and I'm interested to see what the fate of Yuta will be in regard to his mindset change and how it will be challenged throughout the series. He's also currently the only special grade without a clear cut mentality. We have Gojo who wants to usher in a new age of Jujutsu, we had Geto who wanted to get rid of non-sorcerers, and we have Kunjaku who wants to start a new age of Jujutsu. We also have Yuki who wants to remove cursed energy. He's the only one who currently hasn't been fleshed out. So this could be a good time for him to find his resolve, his ideology of what makes him a special grade. But then we come back to things such as his strength. There's a lot of people who argue, has he been capped based on him from volume zero? And if you want my honest question, yes and no. So yes, because obviously he does not have Rika all the time. And that Rika is one of the most broken Rikas with being able to have basically unlimited curse energy, being a vengeful spirit. Moreover, she couldn't be exercised because she was a vengeful spirit. In tandem with that, we could see that he had the full capabilities of his curse technique and mimicry without necessarily a five minute counter. There is also the potential that that Rika is even stronger in general, because if we go back to volume zero, the Gojo said he would even have a tough time dealing with Rika, even though I do believe there's some inconsistencies in volume zero in general, it still gives us a whole new level of how strong Rika was, especially as that Gojo had become somebody of even huge significance after the whole fight with Toji. But then I still disagree to an extent that he has become weaker. I say that because one, now every fight he gets, he has the potential to have more mimicry abilities and we still haven't seen his full arsenal. Moreover, from the things that we got to understand, him going to Africa, he ended up learning more combat knowledge from somebody such as Miguel. We don't know how significant that is, but that in my opinion would showcase that he probably developed his curse energy utility, maybe even learned his domain expansion as well, and these are still things that we're still trying to see. But in terms of his overall strength, he has arguably been one of the best or the best reinforcement that we've seen in the series. One of the key things that he was shown in the fight against Ryu, he could reinforce his body to make up for deficiencies of his weaker body and for somebody who had the highest curse energy output that his blows can send even Rika flying. But to take it to a step further, his combat experience has got even better. And I think combat experience is something that is very significant when you come into fights, especially when it becomes very close. And now he has a domain expansion. And with a domain expansion, that is the highest pinnacle of Jujutsu. So he has now got to develop himself in a far better sorcerer overall, but obviously it could stay as a potential cap to his potential because he does not have it for full utility. But some of the things in the most recent chapters has boosted the whole process of having Rika in the first place. Aside from the fact that he gets that continuous supply of curse energy, being able to hold his curse tools, being able to then use his ability of mimicry, we know from the previous chapters that having multiple curse techniques would cause your brain to overdrive. So now, him being able to not only store these curse techniques, it showcases the bigger utility for somebody such as Rika, which a lot of people would talk about did him having Rika back put him at a disadvantage, and even though he has a 5 minutes counter, it's still of a benefit to Utah. Currently we are unaware of how he has Rika. And there's the potential that he can utilize one of the most intriguing things in the series being binding vows to potentially extend that counter it could put him on a whole new level and become even more dangerous but to take that even away how many characters are we really talking about is dealing with a five minute utah 
So at the end of the day, he potentially still has enough to deal with it. But I do see people's arguments. And I like to make it very clear that five minutes can be seen as a weakness when we come against the very strongest characters such as Kenjaku and Sukuna. But now, one thing that is obviously of intrigue, what could be his domain expansion? DJ, if you're watching this video, shout out you because you gave out the idea for this domain. And that is the example of something called Mirror World. Mirror World would basically allow him to make clones of himself in the domain in which would be a sure hit slash sure kill effect in which each kind of Utah would have a different curse technique. So all the abilities that he has copied would be used in unison but will come from different Utahs as well and it currently wouldn't inhabit something such as Rika and it's kind of going away from the different capabilities of people saying that maybe he has multiple Rikas. The reason I say this I feel it's something that could nicely embed his curse technique of mimicry while being a little bit more creative from just him being able to use all his mimicry abilities but giving him a new level of utility to be able to overwhelm a sorcerer with multiple tude of abilities. I think it would be pretty interesting to see and that's kind of my personal opinion on the theorization of what we could see as Yuta's domain. But in total, the fate of Yuta is very interesting because we can now continue to the final outcome a lot of people are theorizing to see and that is Yuta versus Kenjaku. So I've been very prevalent and if you're very familiar with my content, I've been saying for a very long time that I just don't see any of our current group of sorcerers that isn't Gojo or Sukuna who will beat Kenjaku. However, that could obviously be subverted, but I feel as if it's more likely that we will see the merger plan and we'll get to a situation where Kenjaku has won in quotation marks and eventually will have his whole decline. But the whole clash, um, we don't know how it's going to go. I do believe, like I said, that Kenjaku will win but I do believe Yuta will show out and will push him to a high new level. But in terms of a matchup, I do believe Crespirate Manipulation potentially matches up a little better against somebody such as Yuta compared to somebody such as Yuki, who obviously has her ability of Gurada that can one-shot her curses. Yes, we do have things such as Curse Speech, but we're going to have to see how things such as Curse Speech can work against the higher level curses, as well as Yuta obviously can output Reverse Curse Technique, which can be something that could be of big detriment to his curses, but he would have to engage with them and get close to them. But that whole clash is interesting, and it's one big plotline that a lot of people are expecting to happen, and especially with how we know that Special Grades are, Special Grades like to fight on their own, so there's an even potential that he could just fight on his own. But the, regardless of that conclusion, I think the fate of Utah is intriguing because I feel as if compared to the other characters, you really don't know what is going to happen with his character. There's a lot of things, will he actually get to that level of individuality that he needs to then get to that level of Gojo Satu? Or will he not get to that level? And will he fail and potentially die? There are so many outcomes that can come with his story, and I'm very intrigued to see how Utah is then written coming to the latter stages of the culling games and further arcs to go, because in terms of people such as Yuji and stuff, I feel as if his whole storyline isn't so clear cut and he intrigues me to see what Vega will do with his character in the future. But what do you guys think in regard to Yuta's storyline? Do you believe that his whole mindset of saving everybody will be challenged begins to abandon it? Or do you believe that will be a pivotal thing and could potentially be his downfall in the series? Or do you think that just none of this is going to happen and we're just going to see Yuta cook because Yuta is Yuta? Regardless, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. And yeah, 